actually I'm, I'm still waiting for a few friends that are coming, who wanted to come and see the performance and they're coming from Zurich so I didn't want to start <laughs> until, they'd, until they'd got here. Um, but I guess it's, it's, it's getting quite late. Um, they're going to be here soon. Um, maybe I can just um, maybe t tell you a story or talk a bit while we while we wait for them. Um, I don't know. It's funny how you always have an image in your head of what it's going to be like to do it, and then when you when you get there or here, it always. It's very different to how you imagined it was going to be. And uh, this room is like, I don't know, somehow it feels a bit disproportioned or something, you know? Like, it feels like there should be a window over there or something. Or, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of thought that I would be in the light and you would be in the dark. You know? and, and this is like, I mean, we're quite close to each other. Although, I mean, it's okay for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay for you. It's okay for you. It feels, quite, it feels quite intimate somehow. I guess it's like, it's okay if you just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, I just talk a bit until while we wait. And, yeah. and I thought I could tell you about um, how I lost my leg. Um, when I was a teenager, I was in a, in a car accident, and um, the, the ligaments and the structure of my knee was really badly damaged to the extent that surgeons couldn't reconstruct it. And um, it was really bad and I was in a lot of pain, so they amputated it just above the joint. And the crazy thing is that when you're going to have an amputation, if you're going to have something amputated, there's 50% chance that you will retain the pain after you've had the operation. It's called phantom pain. It's probably, you know, already. But it's like an imprinting of the pain on your memory and then you continue to feel it after you've lost the body part. And I had this after the operation and yeah, I was, I was looking for a cure, like something to solve the problem and a friend recommended acupuncture and it worked actually after about three courses of acupuncture, um, it was gone, the pain was gone and uh, yeah, that was good because it was really unbearable, like really bad. Um, yeah. I had an experience quite soon after that, actually, which was really strange. Um, I was uh, walking around on crutches a lot when I came out of hospital, and one day I was, um, I was going, my mum my was sitting at the end of the garden, and I was going over to her to sit with her, and I was on crutches, and I was going towards her, and the sun was shining behind me, and it cast my shadow in front of me. And... Um, for a split second, I thought my shadow had gone mad because it had forgotten that I had two legs. And then I realized that it wasn't my shadow that was mad, it was me that I'd forgotten that I only had one leg. And it was so strange because it was so real to me that I had two legs, you know. It was so real that I believed I had two legs. And yeah, it was really strange. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I had an experience recently um, that maybe relates in some way. Um, uh, an old teacher of mine from school, uh, his, my old history teacher, I really liked him and I bump into him sometimes, um, just around, and we always have really nice conversations. He's really interesting. And the last time I saw him, he was like, he seemed a bit strange. He was kind of forgetting words or something. And, uh, or, yeah, something was not quite right. And the other day when I saw him, he didn't know who I was. And uh, he came over to me to speak to me. So obviously part of him 
knew that he knew me, but when he got to me, he didn't know where he knew me from, or he couldn't, didn't know my name, or anything. Well, it's funny because in that situation, I felt like a part of me was lost, because the part of me which is stored in his memory was gone, and I felt like a bit of me was irretrievable in this situation, which was... It was sad, it was really sad, it was hard. Um, yeah, maybe we should just start, I don't know. I guess it's lit, quite lit already. Um, you probably want to eat. Um, actually, the same thing happens in the dark. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, that you lose a part of yourself in the dark. Um, we can try it. Can we, can we, can we make it dark, for, just for a minute? Or? Okay, let's listen to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it really worked. Did it work? I don't know. I don't know if it worked. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know. Maybe it did. Um, yeah, no, sometimes you don't need sometimes you don't need a trick. You, know, you just like wake up in the morning, or I just wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, and I just don't even know like the meaning of me. Or I don't know. I think it can happen if you stop doing something you do regularly. Like Diego, the friend that I wrote this performance that you're going to see tonight, um, he was telling me that he um, he used to be a drummer. He played the drums every day for years and years and years and years. And then one day he just stopped. And he was telling me that, you know, how he felt like a part of him was lost with this. And I don't think he thinks it's a bad thing, but he, it's just kind of curious, like, to think about how those things make us who we are or something. You know? I guess that's like when you lose a relative or a friend or... or um, or even if you see a kid, you know, you just look at a kid and you know you're not a kid anymore. And, I don't know, it's not, that, it's not that I want to be a kid, but when you see a kid, I know kids jump a lot, for example. And I, I as an adult, never really jump because, yeah, I don't know, kid... I don't, it's not that I want to jump, but as an adult, I don't do that anymore because I'm not a kid. I think it would be quite awkward if I jumped some, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we should just start? Can we start? Okay. okay. That's too late. We start anyway. Um, okay. This performance consists of three actions. The first one goes like this. I have three balls. A blue one, a red one, and a yellow one. And I'm going to give those three balls to people, three people in the audience. And I'm going to ask them 
to come on stage and say one line each. And when they've done that, I'm going to ask them to give me the balls, and they're going to go and sit down. I'm going to give them to three other people, and so on and so on, until everyone's participated. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the lines are that you have to say. Okay. The person with the blue ball says, Hi, my name's What's Yours? So, if your name is James, you say, Hi, my name's James, what's yours? And the person with the red ball says, Hi, my name's... It's nice to meet you. So, Hi, my name's Sarah, it's nice to meet you. And the person with the yellow ball says kind of angrily, What the fuck? What about me? I've got a name too, you know. And the people, the two people with the red and the blue balls, they just ignore the person with the yellow ball. <laughs> so I'll say that again. I know this is in English. I apologise for that point. I'll, I'll say it slowly. So the person with the red, the blue ball says, Hello, my name's David, what's yours? The person with the red ball says, Hi. My name's Louise, it's nice to meet you. And the person with the yellow ball says, What the fuck? What about me? I've got a name too, you know. What's yours? My name is Michelle. Uh, nice to meet you. And I pass it on. That's great. The yellow bow. Hi, my name's Adrian. Nice to see you. Some things don't need an explanation, they just make sense. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Maybe we should just go to the second action. We'll, just, we'll go to the second action. Are you friends from Zurich here? <laughs> okay, this is... Um, oh, it's not them. No. <laughs> no? But I mean, Durant. This action, it goes like this. There's two apples, and... Um, one second. Um, there's, there's two apples. Um, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna do this one, but maybe it works kind of if I just read it. I can just read the action instead of doing it. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bit like variety. Or I'm gonna try it. Okay. Sean walks to the corner and takes three apples from her bag. But when she comes back to the stage, she trips over her shoelace and falls on the floor, dropping all the apples. She stands up, brushes off her clothes, and then picks up the apples again. Sean. I think that's the first time I ever tripped during a performance. Once I almost tripped, but a guy caught me before I hit the floor. It was a strange experience, tripping but not falling, you know? Okay, let's continue. Sean, showing three apples to the audience. Here, I have two apples. One of them contains a strong sedative. If you eat it, you'll fall asleep in a couple of minutes. It's not dangerous, I've tried it many times myself. You just fall asleep and you wake up again in five or six hours. The thing is, I don't know which apple contains the sedative. I'll give one of them to a volunteer, and I'll eat the other one. If the volunteer falls asleep, nothing will really happen, and I'll continue with the performance as planned. <laughs> However, if I fall asleep, the performance will most likely be over, and uh, you'll have to decide what to do with my sleeping body. <laughs> Saskia, shouting from the back of the audience, Sean, are you sure about this? Sean. <laughs> Yes, it's fine, it's safe. Okay, here in the, in the performance we wrote two scenarios for what should happen next. Depending on whether someone would volunteer to eat the apple that might contain a sedative which would make you sleep for like quite a long time. So I thought I can just ask you like if there would be, if we were doing this, whether anyone would volunteer to eat the apple that might contain the sedative. <laughs> no. no. No one would. Oh. <laughs> so if we were doing this, you would eat the apple that might contain the sedative that would send you to sleep. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> okay. So yes. Okay. Sean puts one apple on the floor, and she asks the volunteer to come on stage and gives him the second apple. Sean and the volunteer eat the apple, and Sean falls asleep. We wake her up.
Not for six stunden ist es oh. vorbei, oder? Oh, someone go and kiss that girl. <laughs> sleeping really well. <laughs> Prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>